Kyle Britton, at 27 years old, was no stranger to the challenging trails and rugged beauty of Hawaii's landscapes. An experienced hiker from Honolulu, he had explored many paths with friends and family throughout his life. His love for the great outdoors was matched by his skills and knowledge of survival techniques, making him well prepared for almost any challenge nature could throw at him. Yet, on August 30th of 2019, Kyle decided to embark on a journey unlike any other he had undertaken before, a solo hike in the expansive Waipio Valley on the Big Island of Hawaii. This decision was out of the ordinary for Kyle, who had always hiked with company. The Waipio Valley, known for its stunning vistas, steep cliffs, and deep cultural significance, is as beautiful as it is treacherous. His father, Steve Britton, recounted Kyle's resolve to hike alone, expressing concerns over the decision but trusting in his son's abilities and judgments. On the morning of his disappearance, Kyle set out at around 6 a.m., driving his vehicle to the trail's entrance near the Waipio Valley lookout area. He had informed his family of his plans, marking his route on the trail towards Waimanu Valley, a path framed by a thousand foot cliff at a 70 degree angle. This information would later become a crucial piece of the puzzle in understanding his last known whereabouts. By noon that day, a signal from Kyle's cell phone briefly pinged, offering a faint glimmer of his presence in the area. However, as hours turned into night with no word from Kyle, attempts to contact him proved futile. His family's worry deepened, leading to the filing of a missing persons report with the Hawaii Police Department on the evening of August 31st. The valley, a residence of early Hawaiian kings and a site revered for its historical and spiritual significance, had transformed into the backdrop of a perplexing disappearance. The mystery of Kyle Britton's decision to hike alone, his preparedness, and his sudden vanishing has since echoed through the valleys and communities of Hawaii, igniting a search that would draw in volunteers, experts, and the hearts of many across the nation. Before dawn on August 30th of 2019, Kyle Britton prepared to step into the unknown. It was an unusual day. Kyle, who usually hiked with friends or family, chose solitude over companionship for his journey into the Waipio Valley. As the first light of the day touched the sky, Kyle gathered his essentials, water, power bars, and his trusted cell phone. These items, simple yet vital, were all he thought he needed for the day's adventure. His father, Steve, watched with a mix of pride and worry. The decision to hike alone had sparked concern. Steve remembered cautioning Kyle about the risks, emphasizing the importance of safety. Despite his vast experience and the countless trails Kyle had conquered, hiking alone presented a new set of challenges, especially in the unfamiliar and rugged terrain of Waipio Valley. Kyle reassured his father with a plan. He would hike the trail towards Waimano Valley and return before sunset. He shared his route promised regular check-ins, and with a sense of determination, assured his father of his readiness. The last conversation between Kyle and his family now lingers as a haunting memory. With his preparations complete and his route set, Kyle left in his vehicle, parking it near the trail's entrance as the morning unfolded. The world was unaware that this departure marked the beginning of a mystery that would captivate and concern many. As Kyle ventured into the valley, a place of immense beauty and hidden dangers, his story took a turn toward the unknown, leaving behind unanswered questions and a trail gone cold. With the break of dawn as his only witness, he ventured toward the valley's lookout, the last place anyone would report seeing him. As the day unfolded, Kyle's silence grew more pronounced. Calls to his cell phone went unanswered, texts remained undelivered, and by nightfall, worry turned into alarm. The silence from Kyle, so out of character for the experienced hiker, sent a ripple of concern through his family. The following day, August 31st, the gravity of Kyle's absence sank in. Faced with a day of silence and no sign of his return, his family contacted the Hawaii Police Department. A missing person report was filed, marking the official start of a search that would draw eyes and hearts from across the nation. The report sparked a flurry of activity, with law enforcement and Kyle's loved ones grappling with the sudden turn from an ordinary hike to an urgent search and rescue operation. 
the search for a hiker in Hawaii, missing for over a week now. He was last seen near heading towards a steep trail on the big island. And ABC's Marcy Gonzalez joins us with more on this now intensifying search. Good morning, Marcy. Good morning, Eva. This young man's father says he's been hiking since he was three years old and did everything right in this situation. He let people know exactly where he'd be and when to expect his next call. And when it didn't come nine days ago, his family called for help. In this scenic landscape this morning, a daunting search for this hiker missing for more than a week. Teams scouring the steep, thick terrain of the Waipio Valley on Hawaii's Big Island determined to find Kyle Britton. I have to be optimistic. Um, we all are. Two Fridays ago, the 27-year-old experienced hiker decided to spend the day on a trail he'd hiked with family in the past. This time, though, setting out by himself. He never hiked alone. And he said, I want to try it. He left at 6 a.m. His family saying his cell phone pinged at the top of the trail's more than 1,000-foot cliffs at 8 a.m. Other than his vehicle found parked nearby, there's been no sign of Kyle since. He wasn't equipped to do an overnight hike. If he's out there surviving, which we hope he is, uh, it's pretty bare essentials he's working with. But the search team, growing by the day, is well-equipped. Helicopters, dogs, and rescuers who know firsthand that anything is possible. You know, this is a very large area, so we're just trying to make sure that Kyle didn't push really far in. Javier Canelops is one of the volunteers who found Amanda Eller 17 days after she disappeared during a hike in Hawaii. I never lose hope of finding that. I mean, Amanda was a perfect example of that, you know. Of, of never losing hope. This morning, leaning on that inspiration to help fuel this search. We're all going to be here until we find them. And his family says it rained the day of Kyle's hike, so it's possible he slipped and is injured somewhere in that valley. They say there's also little cell service there, which would explain why his phone stopped pinging. Teams are heading back out to look for him this morning and raising money on GoFundMe to cover the mounting costs of this search. With. A lot of people hoping for a positive outcome. Marcy Gonzalez for us in Los Angeles. Thank you. By September 1st, the search for Kyle had mobilized into a full-scale operation. The Hawaiian Police Department and the Hilo Fire Department, equipped with the resolve to uncover Kyle's whereabouts, led the charge. The call for help echoed far and wide, urging the community to come together. Friends, family, and volunteers, driven by hope and the desire to find Kyle, gathered in solidarity. Search dogs, with their keen senses, and drones, with their sweeping views, were deployed to scour the vast expanse of YPO Valley. These efforts marked the beginning of a tireless quest, a community's united stand against the shadows of uncertainty that had claimed one of their own. The mystery of Kyle's disappearance, deepening with each passing day, became a testament to the bonds that compel us to seek and to never give up hope. As days turned into nights with no sign of Kyle, the search efforts intensified, drawing a wave of support that surged from the heart of the community and beyond. The landscape of the YPO Valley, with its daunting cliffs and dense forests, presented a formidable challenge. Yet. The spirit of the search teams remained unbroken, fueled by the hope of finding Kyle safe. With the mystery deepening, the call for volunteers echoed far and wide, resonating with a community ready to stand in solidarity. People from all walks of life, bound by a shared purpose, stepped into the unknown, braving the challenging terrain of the valley. This is day three of the search. Um, we brought in rescue dogs from Kauai, we have the helicopters going up. We have ground crews of maybe six to eight people on the ground searching the trails in the valley. Um, the police uh, rescue, fire rescue are committed for two more days. Then we're probably gonna be moving to a community-based search program. The leader of the search team from Maui that was successful in finding the lost woman that was lost for 17 days in Maui, he's here coordinating the search efforts for the community-based program. What we're gonna need is volunteers. Um, if you're in physical shape of any kind to hike the trails or hike the valley, we're gonna need 100, 200 people to start combing the hillsides, uh, maybe repel people if we've got that. Um, any help that you can give, um, 
I don't wish this on anybody. It's unbelievable. So any help you can give, we, my wife Lily and I, Kyle's mom, Kyle's brother is here. We've got family all over the islands. We love the support and help we've got so far, but I think we're gonna need a lot more. So thank you so much for everything so far. Is there a contact number that they can call for more information that you have? Um, you can call my cell, 808-99. Um, ask for me, and my cell's on. We have some coverage up here, minimal, but we are checking all the time. All right, Steve, well, good luck in the continued search as we continue to search for um, Kyle. His last known whereabouts was, um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, he was gonna do a day hike, um, hike the Z Trail. So he came Friday morning at 7 a.m. Um, somebody saw up here, he asked to use the bathroom where it was, they pointed it out and he said, thanks, have a nice day. And that's the last time anybody saw or heard from him. Um, we've had people in the valley, hikers, everybody, no one's seen or heard anything about him since then. So this is day three and uh, knowing he's out there is killing us. The response was overwhelming with hundreds of volunteers lending their time, effort and expertise to the cause. They combed through the thickets, called out Kyle's name, and held onto the belief that their efforts would lead them to him. The logistical challenges of the search were many. The vastness of the area, coupled with its treacherous paths and limited access, tested the resolve of the search teams daily. Yet, innovation and determination led to the deployment of drones which soared above the canopy, providing eyes in the sky where the terrain was too difficult for volunteers to reach. As the search expanded, so did the outpouring of support in the form of donations. Funds flowed in, not just from locals, but from well-wishers across the nation, all touched by Kyle's story and eager to contribute to the search efforts. These donations help fuel the logistical needs of the operation, from transportation for the search dogs to the hiring of helicopters to sweep the vast expanses of the valley from above. The national attention the case received served to amplify the urgency of the search, casting a spotlight on the mystery of Kyle's disappearance and the collective endeavor to find him. News outlets, social media, and community forums buzzed with updates and calls for assistance, drawing more volunteers and resources to the valley. In the face of adversity, the community's resolve only grew stronger, epitomizing the power of collective action and the unyielding hope of finding Kyle Britton. What's happening, everybody? Today is day 11, 12? I think it's 12. It's Tuesday. As you can see, we're going up Z Trail, which is absolutely brutal just to start off with. We got teams still in the valley. That's that swamp that we searched yesterday all the way around the perimeter. You can see just how vast this valley is, but we want to continue to search the ridge line. Unfortunately, today we don't have access to helicopters to fly us up. Tomorrow we will have three teams fly up. That's if we can't find them today, obviously. As you can imagine, most of us are beat. This is actually real small teams. Basically our main team with some local volunteers. We also have some local hunters involved. But I mean, you can see this rugged beauty. That's spectacular. And normally I would be relishing doing this. This is absolutely brutal, especially after the couple of days of hiking we've already had just really tough conditions. So just wanted to give an update and show you exactly where we're at, seeing how much energy, focus, determination it is to search this great expanse. We're going up. Talk to you soon, Javier out. As the search for Kyle Britton continued, the emotional toll on his family became heart-wrenching. Their daily lives were now consumed by the search, each day passing without Kyle, bringing a heavier burden of worry and longing. 
Among the volunteers, drone videographers and search experts emerged as key figures, utilizing their skills to pierce the veil of mystery surrounding Kyle's disappearance. The drone pilots, with their eyes in the sky, searched from above, while experts on the ground navigated the treacherous terrain, each step guided by the hope of finding a clue, a sign, anything that could lead to Kyle. Uh, we're just pushing back into the valley again. We're going to do some, some gully work and just see if there's any spots that he potentially would have, have slipped or just... We don't know at this point, and uh, we're reopening, reopening our ideas to things that we we think we had checked already. Uh, now that we have a little bit more resources and a little bit more experience, <laughs> um, we've got our, our our master diver here who just took a little spill. Um, didn't go down the cliff though, which is Thank a good God. thing. Um, but yeah, just hoping we find them today. Uh, at this point, closure at any point, um, you know, it's what we want. Absolutely, we man. We really want him to be alive and absolutely. I want to slap the hell out of him, <laughs> but the nights are getting harder. The days are getting harder, uh, but we're not going to stop. Fuck I mean, you, man. He's out here somewhere. And, and that's what keeps us going. So we're just going. Absolutely, dude. Thank you so much, Sam. All right, guys. See you up soon. As days turned into weeks, the official search efforts began to wane, but the community's determination did not. The mission to find Kyle transitioned into a community-led effort, a testament to the bond and collective will of those involved. The valley, once a place of natural beauty and solitude, had now become a symbol of unity and hope. Kyle's family, at the heart of this endeavor, continued to lead the charge, their faith unwavering. They organized searches, coordinated with volunteers, and ensured that Kyle's story remained at the forefront of the community's consciousness. Their home became a hub of activity, maps lined the walls, and plans were made and remade, each strategy fueled by the singular goal of finding Kyle. In the face of uncertainty, the community's hope remained persistent. The search for Kyle Britton had brought together people from all walks of life, each contributing in their own way to the efforts. It was this collective hope, this united front, that illuminated the path forward a beacon in the search for Kyle, keeping alive the belief that he would be found. Today, the search for Kyle remains active in the hearts of those who knew him and in the community that came together in his name. The efforts have evolved, but the hope for Kyle's safe return burns as brightly as ever. Volunteers continue to gather, share stories, and comb through new areas, driven by the belief that Kyle is still out there. The legacy of Kyle's disappearance transcends the immediate urgency of the search efforts. It has woven a fabric of awareness and community support that will endure. His story has inspired initiatives focused on improving hiking safety, emergency preparedness, and the establishment of a support network for families facing similar ordeals. The valley where Kyle was last seen has become more than a backdrop to his mysterious disappearance. It stands as a symbol of communal strength, resilience, and the indomitable spirit of hope. In the search for Kyle Britton, a community found its unity, a family found its strength, and the world was reminded of the profound impact one person could have on the hearts of so many. The quest to find Kyle goes on, with each day bringing new efforts, new challenges, and renewed commitment to bringing him home. Tramel Evans, at the young age of 25, was the epitome of an avid hiker, with a passion that led him down countless trails and through a variety of landscapes. Tramel sought not just the beauty of the natural world, but also the solitude and challenge that it offered. Each hike was not just a physical journey for him, but a spiritual one as well, a chance to connect with the earth and himself on a deeper level. On April 30th of 2023, Tramel prepared for what was anticipated to be another mark in his journey as an explorer of the great outdoors. 
This particular adventure had him set his sights on the Black Rock Campground, a renowned starting point for hikers in the northwest corner of Joshua Tree National Park. Known for its unique geological features, stark beauty, and the mysteries whispered by its ancient landscapes, the park was a haven for hikers like Tremel. It was a place where the vast skies met the rugged earth, where every sunrise promised new discoveries. The last day he was seen, Tremel carried with him the usual essentials for a hiker, but also an air of excitement for the unknown paths that he would tread. Joshua Tree, with its twisted namesake trees and terrain that ranged from barren deserts to lush oases, was more than just a park. It was a world unto itself, filled with secrets and challenges. Tremel's plan was to hike from Black Rock to the Geology Tour Road and then return to Black Rock via the California Riding and Hiking Trail, a route familiar to him, yet always ripe with new experiences. However, what started as a routine excursion into the wilds became surrounded in an air of mystery as the days passed. The park, a place of natural wonder, seemed to have drawn Tremel into its fold, keeping him beyond the reach of the world he left behind. As the scheduled date of his return came and went, the mystery deepened. The vast expanses of Joshua Tree National Park, with their allure and danger, had witnessed many stories, but Tremel's had taken an unexpected turn into the unknown. Tremel Evans had a plan that was both simple and daring. He would start his journey at Black Rock, a familiar base camp hugged by the shadows of Joshua Tree National Park's rugged peaks. From there, his path would weave through the desert, aiming for the geology tour road. This stretch was not just a route, but a passage through time, where each rock and crevasse whispered ancient secrets. His return was to be via the California Riding and Hiking Trail, a ribbon of dirt and dust that snaked through the heart of the park, promising solitude and the raw beauty of the wild. May 5th was marked on the calendars as the day of Tremel's return. A friend was to meet him at the same spot where he dropped him off, expecting tales of adventure and sights unseen. But as the clock ticked past the appointed hour, Tremel was nowhere to be found. The air, once filled with anticipation, grew heavy with silence. Calls went unanswered, and the horizon, which had once promised the return of an explorer, now echoed with the quiet of his absence. The mystery of his disappearance began to unfold against the backdrop of Joshua Tree's vast landscapes. A place of beauty became a canvas for unanswered questions. Had Tremel wandered off from the beaten path, lured by the call of the unknown? Or had the desert, with its unforgiving terrain and hidden dangers, claimed another soul? The initial absence turned into hours, then days, sparking a search that would comb the trails and hidden valleys of the park. Reports were filed, and a sense of urgency swept through the community. The adventurer, who had set out to conquer the trails of Joshua Tree, had vanished, leaving behind a trail of mystery and concern that would soon draw many into the search for answers. As soon as Tremel Evans was reported missing on May 5th of 2023, Joshua Tree National Park became the epicenter of a massive search and rescue operation. Park Service officials, understanding the urgency and the risk of the desert, mobilized a team equipped not just with the determination to find Tremel, but with the skills honed for precisely this kind of challenge. Trained trackers, experienced in reading the subtle signs of the wilderness, scoured the trails. Searchers, familiar with every hidden valley and secret cave, spread out in a grid, calling out for Tremel, hoping for a response. Climbers, ready to tackle the park's imposing rock formations, looked for any clue that might lead to his whereabouts. Even the sky was enlisted in the effort, with helicopters cutting through the air, their crews peering down, searching for any sign of the missing hiker. The park, vast and veiled in secrets, seemed to hold its breath as the search intensified. Day after day, the teams pushed through the heat and the cold, driven by hope and the fear of what they might find. Amid this exhaustive effort, whispers of Tremel's fate began to surface. Unconfirmed sightings in Slab City and Wonder Valley sparked a flurry of activity, sending teams to these locations with a mix of hope and skepticism. Slab City, known for its off-the-grid community, and Wonder Valley, with its sparse population and wide-open spaces, offered new mysteries of their own. 
Were these sightings real, or just a mirage or hope in the vast desert? The search continued, days turning into weeks, with each passing moment stretching the fabric of hope thinner. The desert, a place of stark beauty and deadly challenges, offered no easy answers. Every clue, every reported sighting added a layer of mystery to this disappearance, painting a picture of a man seemingly swallowed by the landscape that he so loved. The efforts of the search teams, a testament to the resolve of those who dared to hope in the face of uncertainty, kept the story alive, even as the desert remained silent about the fate of Tramel Evans. In the cold grasp of January, nearly nine months after Tramel vanished into the wilderness, the silence of the desert was finally broken. A group of park rangers, venturing into the Covington Flats area, stumbled upon a scene that would bring a somber turn to the ongoing mystery. There, scattered among the rugged beauty of the desert, were human remains. This discovery, a tragic bookmark in the search for Tramel, lay ominously close to a collection of belongings that spoke silently over their owner's presence. Among these personal items, a backpack, unmistakably belonging to Tramel, was found. The backpack, along with other possessions scattered nearby, served as a silent testament to the final days of a hiker who had sought solace and adventure in the embrace of nature. The items, each carrying a story of their own, whispered of plans made and journeys undertaken, now halted in the quiet of the desert. The news of the discovery reached Tramel's family, who had been clinging to hope amidst the agony of uncertainty. Faced with the task of confirmation, they found themselves sifting through the personal effects recovered from the scene. Each item, a piece of a life that they feared lost, brought a heavy realization. There, in the fabric of a well-worn backpack, the pages of a journal, and the familiar threads of clothing, was the undeniable proof that they had dreaded to find. The belongings, echoes of Tremel's spirit, confirmed the worst for his family. This confirmation, though heart-wrenching, brought somber clarity to the months of searching, hoping, and waiting. The desert, which had kept its secrets closely guarded, had revealed a tragic truth. The family, united in grief but fortified by the memories of Tramel, faced this new reality with a blend of sorrow and acceptance. In the belongings found near the remains, they found a tangible connection to Tramel, a reminder of his love for the wild and his adventurous spirit. The discovery in Covington Flats, while bringing an end to the search, opened a new chapter of mourning and remembrance for those who knew and loved Tramel Evans. He was more than just a hiker. He was a seeker for the secrets and silence that the wild could only offer. Standing tall at six foot three, with a frame built by the trails he traversed, Tramel was a figure that seemed almost carved out of these very landscapes that he loved. His reddish-brown hair, often under the shadow of a dark green beanie, and a gaze that reflected the depths of his adventures, marked him as the one who belonged to the outdoors. His affinity for hiking was not just a hobby, but a calling. Tramel found in the rugged terrains and the serene vistas a solace that the bustling cityscapes could never offer. Joshua Tree National Park, with its surreal landscapes of gnarled trees and shadowed rocks, had become a sanctuary for him. He had wandered its past many times before, each journey a testament to his enduring quest for peace and understanding of the natural world. These expeditions were not just mere walks through nature, but pilgrimages to the heart of the wild, where he sought to find himself in the vastness of the earth. Behind his passions, however, lay a struggle seldom shared with the world. Tramel grappled with his chains of alcohol withdrawals, a battle that shadowed his steps even as he sought liberation in the solitude of hiking. The wilderness offered him a reprieve, a place where he could confront his demons amidst the grandeur of nature. Yet, this very quest for healing underestimated the grip of his condition. The challenge of withdrawal, a silent torment that followed him into the embrace of nature, became an unseen adversary among its trails. Tremel's motivation for hiking transcended the physical realms, delving into the psychological need to find balance and healing. The trails offered him a canvas to paint his struggles and victories, a place where the complexity of human endurance met the simplicity of nature's offerings. His journeys were as much about confronting his inner turmoil as they were about exploring the outer world. 
In the silent majesty of Joshua Tree, Tremel sought not just adventure, but a sanctuary where the whispers of the wind and the warmth of the sun spoke to him, offering him a momentary break from the storm within. The disappearance of Tremel Evans stirred a profound response from both his family and the wider community. The family, in their quest for answers, reached out through social media, creating a network of support that spanned beyond their immediate circle. The digital beacon of hope became a gathering place for those who knew Tremel and many who did not, but were moved by his story. The hiking community, a vast tapestry of individuals who share a common love for the trails, rallied in solidarity. They organized searches, shared flyers, and spread the word, each action a testament to their collective resolve. Amidst the uncertainty, the community's heart swelled with messages of hope, stories of Tremel's kind spirit, and shared prayers for his safe return. This outpouring of support showcased the profound impact one soul could have on many, bridging gaps and uniting strangers in a common cause. Tramel's journey brought to light the often overlooked challenge of alcohol withdrawal, especially in the solitude of nature. His story underscores the vital importance of recognizing the signs and dangers of withdrawal, particularly for those seeking solace and healing in the wilderness. It serves as a reminder for hikers and adventurers to be mindful of their health conditions and the unique challenges they may face when isolated from immediate medical help. The conversation around Tremel's disappearance sparked a crucial dialogue about preparation, the need for awareness of personal health issues, and the importance of not underestimating the severity of withdrawal symptoms. Safety in hiking isn't just about the right gear or knowing the trail. It's equally about understanding one's physical and mental health limits. Tremel Evans's story is a narrative woven with love, mystery, and the undeniable pull of nature. His life, marked by an indomitable spirit and a deep reverence for the outdoors, touched the hearts of those who knew him and those who came to know him through his disappearance. The circumstances of his tragic end, while heart-wrenching, serve as a powerful catalyst for change and awareness in the hiking and broader outdoor communities. His journey reminds us of the beauty of nature and the complexities of human health, urging a deeper understanding and preparation for the challenges we may one day face or embrace in the wilderness. In remembering Tremel, we are called to advocate for increased safety measures and awareness in outdoor adventures, ensuring that the spirit of exploration is safeguarded by knowledge and care for our well-being. Through his story, Tremel Evans leaves behind a legacy that transcends the trails he walked, inspiring a future where the love for adventure is matched by a commitment to safety and health. Jacob Michael Olivier, at the age of 23, found himself far from his hometown of Spring, Texas, in circumstances that baffled everyone who knew him. Known for his kindness and thoughtful nature, Jacob's life in Texas was one of recovery and hope making his sudden disappearance in August of 2011 all the more mystifying and out of character. The setting of his vanishing was the sprawling and wild Everglades National Park in Florida. The questions began when Jacob, without any apparent reason, embarked on a long journey over a thousand miles from the comfort of his home to the unfamiliar and challenging terrain of the Florida Everglades. This vast natural reserve, known for its unique ecosystem and daunting landscapes, was far from anything Jacob was known to seek out. His arrival in Florida was unannounced and unexpected. He had no friends or family in that area, nor any known connections to the state. The purpose of his journey remains shrouded in mystery, sparking intrigue and speculation among those who sought to understand his motivations. Upon entering the Everglades, Jacob's trail went cold. His green 1998 Isuzu Ombre truck was discovered abandoned in a parking lot, a silent witness to the start of a disappearance that would captivate and haunt many. The discovery of the truck, with personal belongings still inside, marked the beginning of a search that would span the rugged expanse of the park. Yet, despite extensive efforts to locate him, no trace of Jacob could be found, deepening the mystery of his fate. Jacob's sudden decision to leave Texas, his solitary journey to the Everglades, and the puzzle of his disappearance create a narrative that is as perplexing as it is tragic. 
Questions abound. What drew him to the Everglades? What happened in the park that led to his disappearance? The lack of answers cast a shadow over Jacob's story, leaving family, friends, and investigators grappling with the unknown. The mysterious aspects of Jacob's disappearance, his unexpected travel, the desolate location where he was last known to be, and the absence of clear reasons for his journey continue to perplex and fascinate those who seek to unravel the truth behind his vanishing. Jacob Michael Olivier's disappearance unfolds with a sequence of eerie and puzzling events, leaving more questions than answers. Before vanishing, Jacob's life seemed to be on a regular path, with no hints of the strange journey he was about to undertake. His last known activities were mundane, part of his daily life in Spring, Texas. Then, without warning, he was gone. The mystery deepened when the Everglades National Park Service found Jacob's green Isuzu Hombre truck abandoned. It sat silently in the parking lot of Pine Glades Lake, an empty vessel hinting at an unsettling story of its owner's disappearance. The discovery of the truck sent shockwaves through Jacob's family. They were blindsided by the news, unable to comprehend why Jacob would travel over a thousand miles to the Everglades, a place disconnected from his life in Texas. As the authorities delved into the investigation, they uncovered CCTV footage that captured Jacob entering the park. This footage, showing Jacob driving into the Everglades alone, provided a crucial timestamp for his entry, but also deepened the mystery, marking the moment he moved beyond the reach of those who knew him. Inside the truck, investigators found items that seemed out of place a ticket that confirmed his entry date into the park, an empty weapon case signaling the presence of a gun now missing, and other personal belongings. These items painted a confusing picture of his intentions and preparedness. The last ping from Jacob's phone came late that afternoon, off a tower within the park, suggesting he had moved further into the Everglades after parking his truck. This final signal from his phone was a critical piece of evidence, offering a fleeting connection to Jacob's movements within the vast park. It guided the search efforts, hinting at where Jacob might have ventured before disappearing completely. Together, these pieces, the abandoned truck, the CCTV footage, the items left behind, and the last phone ping compose a timeline marked by uncertainty and concern. They form the foundation of a mystery that has perplexed his family, friends, and investigators alike. The initial reaction of alarm and confusion have since given way to a relentless search for answers, driving efforts to understand what happened to Jacob after he entered the Everglades, a quest that continues to this day amidst the silence of the park's sprawling wilderness. The search for Jacob mobilized a vast and coordinated effort, weaving together the skills and resources of the Everglades National Park Service, the Civil Air Patrol, and canine units in a desperate attempt to find him. The park's rangers, accustomed to the challenges of their environment, understood the enormity of their task. They were searching for a needle in a haystack, but the haystack was the Everglades, a vast expanse of over 1.5 million acres of wetland, dense vegetation, and waterways. The search teams face formidable obstacles. The Everglades is not only immense, but its terrain is treacherous and unwelcoming. Thick mangroves, deep waters, and the ever-present risk of encountering wildlife, from alligators to venomous snakes, made the search operation perilous. Weather conditions, too, were an adversary. The Florida heat, Sudden thunderstorms and high humidity challenged the endurance of the searchers and complicated efforts to track any signs of Jacob's movement or passage. Despite these obstacles, the search teams pressed on. Canine units attempted to trace Jacob's scent, but could only find traces of it around his truck and a limited perimeter beyond it. This led to speculation that Jacob might have left the park in another vehicle or on foot, broadening the already massive search area. The Civil Air Patrol took to the skies, hoping to spot clues from above while rangers and volunteers combed the ground below. The discovery of the empty weapon case in his truck, coupled with the final ping from his cell phone, suggested various scenarios. Did Jacob meet someone in the park? Was he planning to go off-grid, or was this trip a result of an impulse or confusion? His family and the authorities grappled with these questions, each theory guiding the search in new directions, but yielding little in the way of concrete answers. 
The investigation into Jacob's disappearance was a puzzle with too many missing pieces. The vastness of the Everglades, the challenges posed by the environment, and the scarcity of leads formed a complex web of obstacles that hampered efforts to uncover what happened to Jacob after he stepped into that park. With every day that passed, the mystery of his fate grew deeper, leaving more questions than answers in its wake. The disappearance of Jacob Michael Olivier cast a shadow of sorrow and uncertainty over his family, leaving them grappling with an endless sea of questions and the pain of his absence. Each day without answers adds to their emotional burden, a relentless mix of hope and despair. Jacob's family found themselves in a relentless quest for answers, clinging to any piece of information that might explain why Jacob traveled to the Everglades and what had happened to him there. Their lives were suspended in a state of waiting and wondering, with each unanswered question deepening their anguish. The community response to Jacob's disappearance was a testament to the bonds that tie people together in times of crisis. Friends, neighbors, and even strangers rallied around Jacob's family, offering support in various forms, from participating in search and rescue efforts to providing emotional support. The search for Jacob brought together a diverse group of individuals, each driven by a shared purpose to bring him home. This collective effort reflected the community's resilience and compassion as they joined hands with Jacob's family in their time of need. As days turned into weeks and then years, the absence of concrete answers took its toll, not only on Jacob's family, but also on the wider community. The mystery of his disappearance lingered like an open wound, a constant reminder of the fragility of life and the depths of human connection. Jacob's story transcended personal tragedy, touching the hearts of many and uniting them in a shared hope for closure and peace. The emotional impact of Jacob's disappearance on his family and the surrounding community underscores the profound ways in which a single life can touch many. It is a story of love, loss, and the enduring human spirit in the face of the unknown. In the wake of Jacob's disappearance, theories and speculations emerged, each attempting to shed light on the reasons behind his unexpected journey to the Everglades and the circumstances of his vanishing. The lack of concrete evidence and clear motives turned the case into a canvas for conjecture, with various scenarios painted by those following the case closely. One theory suggested that Jacob, seeking adventure or a break from his routine life, might have been drawn to the Everglades for his vast wilderness and isolation. Perhaps in seeking solitude or a connection with nature, Jacob underestimated the challenges and dangers of the park. This theory contemplates the possibility of an accident or getting lost in the expansive and treacherous terrain of the Everglades. Another line of speculation revolved around the mental health challenges Jacob had faced in the past. Could a desire for escape, a sudden impulse, or a bout of confusion have led him to drive across the country to such a remote and challenging environment? The discovery of an empty weapons case in his truck added a layer of complexity, suggesting preparation for a threat or, more troublingly, an intention that spoke to a deeper turmoil. The last known signal from Jacob's phone, coupled with the CCTV footage of him entering the park alone, fueled discussions about his state of mind and intentions upon arrival. Was Jacob meeting someone in the Everglades? The isolated location, far from his home and devoid of personal connections, made this theory both intriguing and perplexing. The absence of further evidence made it impossible to confirm if the trip was planned or spontaneous, or if Jacob intended to meet with fate or flee from it. Some speculated about the possibility of foul play, considering the Everglades' reputation for being a place where secrets can easily be hidden. However, without evidence of a struggle or a confrontation, this theory remained as speculative as the others. Amid these theories, the implications for the case were significant. Each hypothesis opened new avenues for investigation, but also highlighted the daunting task of searching for truth in a place as vast and impenetrable as the Everglades. The speculative nature of these theories underscores the profound mystery at the heart of Jacob's disappearance. A puzzle composed of fragmented clues, unanswered questions, and the echoing silence of the wilderness. The case of Jacob Michael Olivier remains an unsolved puzzle, a story suspended in the still, silent expanse of the Everglades. 
classified as endangered missing. Jacob's disappearance is a cold case that refuses to fade into obscurity. Kept alive by the tireless efforts of his family, authorities, and a community unwilling to forget. Despite the passage of years, the quest for answers continues, with each day adding to the resolve to uncover the truth behind Jacob's mysterious vanishing. In an effort to keep the case in the public eye, Jacob's family and law enforcement have made repeated appeals for information. Social media posts, flyers, and press conferences serve as a reminder of Jacob's disappearance, urging anyone with even the smallest piece of information to come forward. Contact details for tips are widely circulated, offering a direct line for those who might hold the key to unraveling the mystery. These efforts underscore a collective determination to find Jacob, reflecting a hope that someone, somewhere, knows something that could lead to a breakthrough. Jacob's case casts a spotlight on the broader challenges of missing persons investigations in the vast natural parks like the Everglades. It highlights the immense difficulties faced by search and rescue teams navigating these wild, often inhospitable terrains. The disappearance of a single individual in such a sprawling wilderness underscores the need for enhanced search technologies, improved coordination among agencies, and greater awareness among the public of the risks associated with these natural landscapes. Moreover, Jacob's story serves as a reminder of the countless others who have vanished without a trace in similar settings. It raises important questions about how society, law enforcement, and communities respond to such disappearances and the measures in place to prevent them. In the fate of nature's vastness and the limits of human endeavor, the continuing mystery of Jacob Michael Olivier stands as a testament to the enduring hope for resolution and the relentless search for answers in the depths of the unknown. As we reflect on the enduring mystery of Jacob's disappearance, let us also remember the power of community, the strength of hope, and the unyielding human spirit in the face of the unknown. This story, while unique in its details, is a reminder of the countless others who remain missing, and the ongoing quest for answers that continues to unite us all. Ian McLaughlin, at the age of 27, epitomized the spirit of adventure and the love for the great outdoors. Hailing from Dublin, Ireland, Kean found his second home amidst the rugged beauty of Jackson, Wyoming. Here, he embraced the dual life of a snowboard instructor by winter and a bar worker by summer, thriving in the seasonal rhythms of this picturesque locale. Kean's zest for life and nature was infectious, mirrored in his own eagerness to explore, to meet new people, and to push the boundaries of his own experiences. On June 8th of 2021, Kean set out for what was supposed to be a routine solo hike in the breathtaking expanse of the Grand Teton National Park, a place as renowned for its stunning vistas as it is respected for its untamed wilderness. However, this hike would lead to a mystery that captured the hearts and minds of all who knew him. Kean's failure to return marked the beginning of a deep and unsettling mystery, plunging friends, family, and the wider community into a state of shock and concern. The vibrant young man, known for his friendly demeanor and robust outdoor skills, vanished without a trace, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and a palpable sense of urgency among those desperate to find him. Kian McLaughlin wasn't just an ordinary young man. His life was full of rich experiences and deep connections woven from both sides of the Atlantic. Born in Dublin, Ireland, Kean carried within him a vibrant culture of his homeland, yet he was equally rooted in the American experience, thanks to his dual citizenship. This unique blend of identities shaped him into a person who was as comfortable in the bustling streets of Dublin as he was on the serene, snow-capped slopes of Wyoming. Wyoming offered Kean a canvas as vast and open as his ambitions. As a snowboard instructor, he found joy in gliding down the slopes, his days marked by the exhilarating rush of cold air and the sight of fresh snow underfoot. But Kean's love for the outdoors was not confined to winter months. Hiking through the rugged terrains of Grand Teton National Park, he sought adventure in the wilderness, each new trail a chapter in his ongoing exploration of the natural world. Kean's life in Wyoming was more than just a thrill of outdoor sports. It was also about the connections he forged. With a personality that radiated warmth and genuine interest in those around him, Kean became a beloved figure in both his professional and personal circles. 
Friends from Ireland and the U.S. cherished his companionship, remembering him for his easy laugh, his willingness to listen, and his knack for making every conversation memorable. Before his disappearance, Sian's plans were as simple as they were reflective of his love for nature, a solo hike in the breathtaking expanse of Grand Teton. It was an activity he had undertaken many times before, yet this time it would lead to an outcome that none could have anticipated. The mystery of what happened on that trail remains, but the essence of who Sian was, a man of adventure, camaraderie, and boundless spirit, remains remembered in the hearts of those who knew him. On a day like any other, under the clear blue skies of early June, Sian McLaughlin set out alone to embrace the park. It was a place that promised solitude and adventure, a sanctuary where nature's beauty was as overwhelming as it was serene. His plan was simple, a day hike, an escape into the wild that had become a ritual, a way to reconnect with the earth beneath his feet and the sky above. This hike, however, would unfold into a narrative far removed from the ordinary, marking the beginning of a profound mystery that would captivate all who heard it. As the hours turned into days without any sign of seeing, concern quickly mounted. His absence was out of character, a puzzle that those close to him couldn't piece together. When he failed to show up for work, alarm bells rang. Sian was known for his reliability, his punctuality, and his unwavering commitment to his job. His sudden silence and his unexplained absence spoke volumes. It was then that the reality of the situation sank in. Sian McLaughlin had vanished. The initial search effort sprang from a place of urgency and hope. Teams fanned out across the park, calling his name, hoping for a response. The rugged terrain of the Tetons, with its vast forests, steep slopes, and hidden valleys, became the focus of an intensive search operation. Park rangers, volunteers, and search dogs combed the area, looking for any clue, any sign of seeing. Helicopters buzzed overhead, their eyes scanning the ground below. Each day that passed without a trace of him deepened the mystery, fueling both the determination of the searchers and the growing fear that the wilderness he loved might have claimed him. The search for Sian McLaughlin evolved into an extensive operation that tapped into a broad arsenal of resources and expertise. Park rangers, alongside a committed group of volunteers, initiated a thorough combing of Grand Teton National Park. Dogs trained to track human scent traversed the rugged landscape, their noses diligently working, while helicopters roared overhead, breaking the natural silence. These helicopters weren't just eyes in the sky. They were equipped with infrared technology designed to detect heat signatures, a beacon of hope in locating Sian against the vast, wild backdrop. Yet, the search was far from straightforward. The beauty of Grand Teton National Park are at odds with the challenges that its terrain presents. In the spring, the park transforms, a period of rebirth that also ushers in a phase of unpredictability. Snowmelt accelerates, feeding into rivers and creating a landscape that is constantly changing. Ice lurks beneath the surface, a treacherous layer hidden from view. This was the setting of the search for Sian, a place where every step could lead to discovery or danger. These conditions compounded the difficulties faced by the search teams. The melting snow and ice not only made the terrain hazardous, but also obscured trails and potential clues to Sian's whereabouts. As each day passed, the melting snow reshaped the landscape, potentially erasing paths taken or signs left behind. The natural beauty of the Tetons, with its sprawling vistas and hidden valleys, became a daunting labyrinth in the quest to find Sian, a reminder of nature's power to both awe and challenge those who venture into its domain. The disappearance of Sian McLaughlin reverberated deeply within his family, casting a shadow of profound worry and heartache. At the heart of this emotional storm stood Sian's mother, whose determination to find her son became a beacon of hope amidst the uncertainty. Her resolve to bring Sian home was unwavering, fueled by a mother's love and the relentless desire for resolution. Her strength in the face of such adversity inspired all who joined the search, embodying a hope that refused to dim, even as the days turned into weeks without signs of Sian. In their quest for answers, Sian's families reached out to the wider community, issuing a public appeal that resonated with both locals and visitors of Grand Teton National Park. 
They urged anyone who had been in the park around the time of Sian's disappearance to look through their photographs, hoping that, by some stroke of fate, a clue to Sian's whereabouts might have been accidentally captured. This request, simple yet profound, tapped into a collective desire to help, mobilizing eyes and hearts across the globe in search for one man lost in the wilderness. The family's appeal transcended borders, touching the hearts of many who have never met Sian, but felt moved by the story of a young man with an infectious love for life and adventure. It was a reminder of the threads of humanity that connect us all, a call to action that spoke to the very essence of community and solidarity. In the face of the unknown, Sian's family stood resilient, their voices a testament to the enduring hope that one day Sian would be found and brought home. In the midst of the relentless search, the efforts encountered a bewildering twist. Heather Mykoski, a woman who claimed to have seen Sian on the day of his disappearance, provided a detailed account that sent ripples of hope through the hearts of the search teams and Sian's family. Her vivid description of a conversation with Sian pointed searchers towards a specific area of the park, redirecting resources and focus with a promise of a break in the case. However, this beacon of hope dimmed to darkness when it was revealed that Mykoski's sighting was fabricated, a false lead that steered the search efforts away from potential clues to Sian's actual whereabouts. The revelation of the false sighting was not just a setback, it was a significant blow to the morale of those involved in the search. Valuable time and resources had been expanded on a lead that led nowhere, all while the window of opportunity to find Sian narrowed. Mykoski faced consequences for her actions, including a ban from Grand Teton National Park and a financial penalty, but the true cost of her fabrication was measured in the precious hours lost and the emotional turmoil on Sian's family rallying for his return. In the shadows of this deception, the mystery of Sian's disappearance deepened. Other potential sightings and pieces of information surfaced, including items Sian was believed to have carried with him. An Apple Watch, an iPhone, gold wire rim sunglasses, a silver U-shaped pendant, and a white t-shirt. These details, while seemingly minor, held the potential to unravel the mysteries surrounding Sian's fate. The public was urged to come forward with any information, no matter how insignificant it might have seemed, in the hope that Sian could still be found. The search for truth, hindered by false leads, continued under the weight of unanswered questions and the unwavering hope for a resolution. The search for C.N. McLaughlin remains an open wound in the heart of Grand Teton National Park, a stark reminder of nature's vast and unfathomable depths. Despite the passage of time, the determination of C.N.'s family, along with the commitment of authorities, has not wavered. Their hope, though tested, persists fueled by the belief that answers are still out there, waiting to be found. This enduring quest for closure underscores a collective resolve to uncover the truth of what happened to Sian on that June day, a resolve that resonates with all who hear his story. The call to action remains as vital as ever. Anyone who might hold a piece of the puzzle, no matter how small or inconsequential it may seem, is urged to come forward. Each piece of information is a potential key, a chance to piece together Sian's last steps, and ultimately, to provide his family with the answers that they desperately seek. It is a call not just for information, but for compassion and solidarity in the face of uncertainty. This story, while deeply personal, echoes a universal reminder of the risks inherent in our explorations of the wild. It reinforces the critical importance of preparation and safety in all our outdoor activities, urging hikers and adventurers to inform others of their plans and to respect the unpredictable nature of the wilderness. For the outdoor and hiking community, Sean's disappearance serves as a lesson in the balance between the freedom of adventure and the respect and caution that the natural world demands. As the search continues, the mystery of C.N. McLaughlin's disappearance remains a somber narrative within the grand tapestry of outdoor exploration. It is a narrative that calls on us to reflect on our interactions with nature, to prioritize safety and awareness, and to remember the fragile thread that connects us to the wild and to each other. As we wrap up today's exploration into the mysterious and chilling disappearances of these hikers in our national parks, it is crucial to reflect on the mysterious forces of nature. 
These stories not only intrigue, but also serve as a reminder of the wilderness and its untamed and unpredictable character. Thank you for diving into these stories with me on A Universe of Mystery. If you've been captivated by the strange and often unexplained phenomena we discussed, please show your support by liking this video and sharing it with others who share our curiosity for the unknown. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any new content as we continue to uncover the hidden secrets and dark corners of our world. Keep your mind open and your senses alert. Who knows what we might discover next? See you in the next video where we'll delve deeper into the mysteries of the universe.